Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of exponential functions, specifically how we can identify certain features of exponential function graphs and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So when we're talking about exponential functions, here is our standard form. y equals a times b to the x. Sometimes that y is going to be an f of x or something like that, g of x. But we really need to focus on these two terms, the a and the b, because you can actually tell an awful lot, even if you don't get a visual graph, you just get an equation like this, you can tell an awful lot from this particular standard form here. So what does this a mean? Well, the a is going to be multiple things depending on the context. So if we are dealing with money and compound interest and you invested money and how much uh, would you have if it was compounded annually at a certain rate? This A is going to be your principal. So another way to think of it would be your initial or your starting amount. So sometimes we're not dealing with money. Sometimes we are dealing with population growth or something that is growing or uh, decreasing at a steady rate. And it always starts with something. That's what that A term is. But for our graphing purposes, it's always best to think of it as our y-intercept. So if you get something in this form right here, and the question says, what is the y-intercept? Look at this first term. That's, that's the a term is going to be your y-intercept. Because remember, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. Why is that the y-intercept? We'll take a look. Let's extend this here. Let's say that I make x equals 0, right? So x is my exponent, so I just made it 0. Well, b to the 0. What happens when you make anything to the 0 power? It just turns into 1. So a times 1, which is just the identity proper. We don't even need it. So it's just a. So when x equals 0, guys, y equals a, which means that is going to be our y-intercept. So that's going to be extremely important. It's also going to be our principal, our initial starting amount. Now the b term, we can tell, is going to be our uh, growth rate or decay rate. And so if it's a growth rate, that means it's going to be greater than 1, which means it's going to, from left to right, it's going to kind of move up like this. If it's less than 1, if it's a decimal, it's going to be a decay rate, which means it's going to get smaller when you go left to right. And those are the two terms, A and B. Now, there's one other term that we need to think about, and that's the asymptote. So maybe you've heard that term before. Maybe you have an asymptote is a line that continually approaches a curve but never touches. And so it looks like if we take a look over here, we've got a graph that is uh, blue that's kind of moving up and a graph that is red that's moving down. And it looks like both of those are just sitting right on that x-axis. But actually, that asymptote, that line of asymptote is going to be that x-axis right here. Right? So that's going to be our our y equals 0 is going to be your asymptote. Because it looks like that is sitting right on there, but it's actually getting closer and closer and closer, but never really touching. Let me show you another image here, which I zoomed in over on the right side on this red graph. So this is that same red graph, but I zoomed in. And take a look, right? So here is your y equals 0, and this is your y equals 0 0.01. And you see this red graph is just slowly decreasing just a little bit between 2.45, 2.46, and 2.47 as your x's. And it's going to, no matter how far over to the right you move, it's going to continually get closer and closer to this asymptote, this y equals 0 line, but it's never going to reach it. And that is something you will find on every single exponential function graph. There will be a line of asymptote that the curve will get closer and closer to, but never actually reach.